Hello viewers, this is our lecture number 14. Before you start watching this lecture, I would recommend that you must watch two parts of lecture number 13. In this lecture number 14, I have presented derivation and MATLAB code for a method called L2C method that is used to approximate the Caputo fractional derivative. Now, you can see equation number one. This is what we call left Caputo fractional derivative of order alpha, where alpha lies between one and two. In this equation one, replace x by xn. If we do so, we will have equation two. Now we have an interval from 0 to capital T and I have made a time partition of this interval as you can notice over here. So the initial point is x0 which is equal to 0 and the final point is xn which is equal to capital T. So we have n plus 1 grid points. Whereas the small h stands for the constant time step size. Now, in equation 2, we had an interval from 0 to xn. I have broken that interval into several sub-intervals and have obtained equation number 3, wherein you can see that the first term has the integration limits from 0 to x1. Likewise, the second term x1 to x2 and in this way you can keep continuum. In equation 4, I have used the summation notation and have added all the terms given in equation 3. So if you substitute k is equal to 1, in the lower limit of integration you will have x0 which is equal to 0 and you will obtain x1. So you will have the first term in equation number 3. So if you keep putting the several values of k, you will be back to equation number 3. So equation 4 can be considered a compact form of writing equation number 3. Now in equation 4, you can also notice that we have a term with the second derivative of a function. Now here, the second derivative can be approximated by using the four-point discretization as follows. So, the second-order derivative f double prime has now been replaced by this four-point discretization method. So, here you can notice that we have total four functional values in the numerator and in the denominator we have the term 2h squared. In equation 6, I have moved this green color expression out of the integral sign and we will have this equation number 6, wherein now we can perform the integration by using simple power rule. And if we do so, the integration would be xn minus s whole power 2 minus alpha divided by minus times minus of 2 minus alpha. So we will have equation number 7. Now wherein you can see that this minus 2 plus alpha is actually a constant. I can take it outside and then I will have equation number 8 wherein I have also applied the fundamental rule of calculus upper limit minus lower limit. After that from our previous knowledge of classical numerical analysis we know that xn is equal to n times h since x0 is 0. Similarly, xk minus 1 is equal to k minus 1 times h and finally x sub k is equal to k times h. Use these relations in equation 8. We will have equation number 9. So you can see that these blue highlighted with the blue color terms so the terms highlighted with the blue color are actually the terms we have obtained after using those relations. In these terms, you can also notice that h power 2 minus alpha 
can be taken common so i have taken it out of the summation sign and we will have equation number 10 wherein i have also used one of the properties of the gamma function that is why you have 2 minus alpha times gamma of 2 minus alpha which is now gamma of 3 minus alpha and now you can also notice that h square h square can be cancelled and if we do so, we will reach at equation number 11. And this equation number 11 is basically our L2C method. Hence, the L2C method for the left Caputo fractional derivative has been obtained. And it, it is represented by equation number 12. You can use this method. It's a numerical technique to approximate the left Caputo fractional derivative where the fractional order alpha lies between 1 and 2. Okay, so this is our L2C method. Now I'm going to open the M file of MATLAB software so that we can see how a code can be designed for the equation number 12. So let's open the MATLAB. Now here, you can notice that on line number 14, we have some necessary commands. After that, line number 25, this is the step size. Then line number 31, this is the initial value. After that, we have the last value that I have taken as 1 on line number 37. And then you can see that we have an interval starting from x1 and ending at x last taking the step size h. After that, we have on line number 49, the number of steps, which are equal to, which is equal to x last minus first value of x divided by step size. And I have also used the ceiling function so that if I have any decimal number, it may convert it into the integer, which is highest, the first integer highest than the decimal number. So you will actually have the integer number next to the number you are getting. After that, line number 54, you have fractional order that I have chosen here 1.5. Once again, you can take any, any number over here. The function to be differentiated is chosen as sine x. You can change this function as well. Now the main algorithm starts. So you can see here the constant term that was actually with this scheme. Let me show you the scheme also. So you can notice here that we have, let me maximize it a bit. So notice here we have h power minus alpha divided by two times gamma of three minus alpha. And same you can observe on line number 74. This constant has been assigned a name by me and that is capital A. After that, k starts from 3 and ends at n. Now, you might be wondering why the index k is starting from 3. Let me explain. Before I explain this, look at line number 87. This is the algorithm that I had just shown you on the slide. So, let's go back to the slide and tally the terms. This is the constant capital A. Then the sum command, built-in command of MATLAB. And now tell you the terms. N minus K plus 1 whole power 2 minus alpha. Same goes here with the red color. After that minus N minus K whole power 2 minus alpha. Which is also present here with the red color. And then you have the functional value at K plus 1. So the same over here. And then minus sign F of X of K. So same on the slide. Then K minus 1. K minus 1 here. Then you have plus functional value at xk minus 2. So same has been written over there. Fine. So nothing has been changed. Whatever you have written by hand, the same has been typed. Now the question. Here the summation carries the index k that is starts from 1. Why in MATLAB I have started from 3? So the answer is look at this functional value. So it is, it has been, it has to be computed 
at k minus 2 now see if you are going to start k from 1 then what happens you will have 1 minus 2 x of minus 1 matlab does not recognize x of minus 1 if you put 2 it will give you x of 0 once again matlab does not know that x of 0 is our first functional value first value of x this is the reason you will have to start k from 3 so that the matlab should print here x of 1 and now it recognizes x of 1 as the first element in the interval that you have defined over here let me show you on line number 43 now it knows that x1 is the first element of the vector x this is the reason we are starting k from 3 okay so here we complete the coding of the l2c method now it will give the approximate result when x is equal to 1, the ending point. Now I want to compare it with the exact answer so that I may compute what is the error in the L L2C method. So that is why I have also written here on line number 109 the exact answer that I mean that the exact Caputo derivative for the function sin x when alpha is 1.5 now you might be wondering how i have computed this exact solution so i would suggest that you should watch my previous lecture the second part of lecture number 12 uh, second part sorry it's sec second part of lecture number 13 wherein i have explained that how to find out the exact solutions exact fractional derivatives of some functions okay after that, on line number 153, I have computed the absolute errors and then some necessary commands to display the results. And finally, you can see on line number 131, we have presented the results. So N stands for the number of steps. I will see how many steps are taken by the code, or by the method, step size H, exact answer, approximate answer, and then absolute error. Fine. So let's run the code with the step size 0 0.1 so i'm going to press the run button and now i'm going to the command window to check the result here we go we have 10 steps with the step size 0 0.1 the exact answer approximate answer and the magnitude of error is 10 to the power minus 2. let's go back to the script comment this line number 14 and also comment a couple of other lines over here and now reduce the step size and we will observe what happens with the behavior of the absolute errors so now i run the file and i reduce the step size again and i will keep doing so for a couple of step sizes okay so let's go to the command window and now you can see the behavior of the absolute errors so behavior is decreasing the way error is behaving is monotonically decreasing behavior wherein you can also see in the last the last row that the exact answer and the approximate answer have started to match with each other up to four decimal places you can also put some commands in matlab to see other digits as well up to 16 digits you can see the digits if you use the command format long e fine so this is how a matlab code for the l2c method can be designed I hope you have understood the explanation for the derivation and as well as the MATLAB code for the numerical method called L2C method that is one of the most frequently used methods for the approximation of the left Caputo fractional derivative. Your questions and feedback are welcomed in the comment box. I hope you have understood and enjoyed the lecture. Thank you so much for watching the lecture.